Today we're going to be looking a little bit about the electrical system and in particular the lighting and the blackout lighting because that's a little bit unique to military vehicles. Lighting switch is very similar to the one found on old MB or GPW Jeeps. At the back of the switch is a micro circuit breaker. This is fed by a three square millimeter cable direct from the batteries and it carries all of the load for the headlights and the trailer power so it's pretty heavy duty. It sets permissions basically. While it does work like a normal switch to direct power through the fuse box and onto different lights, it also outputs to control a relay behind the dash which determines which brake lights are going to operate and whether or not service lights will operate. This push button lock prevents the user from moving it out of the off position or moving from service lights to blackout lights or vice versa. Doing that in combat might just light you up like a Christmas tree for all the world to see. To unlock it you hold the button down and then turn the lever. In the off position only the turn signals and hazard flashers are available. At position 1 you have the turn and hazard signals, the service markers, the license tag, the service brake lights and the reverse lamp. Position 2 is as per position 1 but adds the headlights. To flip over to blackout mode we again need to unlock the gate by pushing the button. In position 3 the blackout markers are on plus the blackout brake lights. In position 4 we have those plus the blackout driving lamp. These are the front blackout marker lights. Um, later on when it's dark I'll show you how those work. They have a, a wedge uh, shape in them so that you can judge the distance that you are from uh, the vehicle. Uh, these are teardrop shaped. They look a lot like the MB or GPW parts. Um, they're just slightly different but they're obviously patterned on those. The marker lamp has a 6 watt bulb and a lens which makes the twin wedge shape. These allow the vehicle in convoy ahead to tell how far you are in front. I'm told that the blackout marker lights are really bright with night vision optics on but without that luxury they're very, really very dim. If there's no light visible on the vehicle ahead then you're lagging behind. If you can see just one spot of light per side of the vehicle then you're just right at between 18 and 55 meters away. Two bars visible on either side means that you're about to collide. The tail lights have three lamps with a lens plus a blackout cover which my Jeep is missing. The top bulb is the marker light which is just 6 watts. The lens cover holds the distance wedge marks. The middle bulb is a blackout stop light. The bottom bulb is also a tail light, a 12 watt bulb that's wired in parallel with the service tail lights. The lens cover covers this completely. I guess the covers might go on only for maneuvers or in combat or are removed if the usual uh, service tail lights fail. This device here is mistaken by a lot of people for a map reading lamp. Uh, because it is so ridiculously dim. It has a 12 watt bulb and looking underneath you can see that the lamp itself is mostly shielded and there's only a very small slit for the light to shine through and then you've got this hood here which makes sure that the light just shines right down onto the floor. So right up close that seems fairly bright with its 12 watts but and that's a little slit of light that comes out of the filtered hooded blackout driving lamp. Service mode then we have switches for the marker lights, the headlights 
hazard flashers and uh, panel light and front fog light. In addition to those uh, light buttons, uh, we also have here the windshield wiper uh, pull switch. Um, this button is labeled for a fan. I don't have a heater installed, so this one controls the, uh, the windshield washers. And here we have uh, actually a 24 volt cigarette lighter. Very nice of the Japanese army to think of your nicotine addiction. The panel light, not very bright, but it does charge the luminescent gauges, which is, a little, which is nice. The headlights, just for completeness, are sealed beam units. They're uh, 55 watt dip, 75 watt main beam. The, uh, the Mitsubishi feature is these uh, bash guards, which of course you'd never see on a CJ3B. The uh, service uh, side lights uh, contain the, uh, the turn signal, uh, the service light, and a parking light which the civilian models don't have. The civilian models also don't have this rather nice uh, bash guard to protect the lamp from damage from trees or rocks or things like that. This is a reproduction uh, fog light. Um, I don't know how accurate a repro it is. Um, it's a 35 watt fog light. In the back, uh, we have the uh, service uh, turn signals, the service stop and tail light, which is com a combo light. Um, this is again a repro uh, reversing lamp and that's all we have time for today.